Rocky Point, Long Island, 1933. Guglielmo Marconi and David Sarnoff visit the birthplace of broadcasting. Radio's first castle was this rustic shack. In 1921, radio fans were all earphones listening to a pioneer station, WHN. Crystal Set Explorers hear such performers as Miriam Batista, child movie star. One of radio's trailblazing announcers introduces what he calls a little peach from a Broadway show. The peach poses as radio gets called everything from gag to gadget, at best a plaything and a fad. But fate is to make radio a power in a world of peace and war. Herbert Hoover, Secretary of Commerce in 1922, finds infant radio facilitates news gathering, as do many others in high public office. Andrew White comes to a WJZ microphone with latest news in sports in what is then the latest in broadcasting studios. But growth of radio is swift. From toothpick antennas sprout these beacons of broadcasting, the Fort Jefferson Tower. And in Arlington, Virginia, here's one 600 feet high. Radio waves over ocean waves. In 1923, one of the first American overseas broadcasts is heard in England by Captain West of the BBC and relayed to all England by a wondrous thing called wireless. Chicago's Edgewater Beach Hotel houses this top studio of its time. Drapes hide microphones, glass walls shut out unwanted sound. Here are among the first motion pictures of broadcasting. Members of Chicago Civic Opera sing the quartet from Rigoletto. Here's Florence Macbeth and Angelo Minghetti. Famed Uncle Joe Cannon becomes a fan as 19-year-old Marion Talley in 1926 sings in New York for a radio audience of 16 million listeners. Radio is big time, here to stay. In the marine room at the Edgewater Beach Hotel, broadcasting branches out. On one of radio's first remotes, the famed Oriole Orchestra plays for an unseen audience. Police discover the power of broadcasting. From mobile units, alarms are sent out to officers equipped with receiving instruments. It's in trial stages now, but it works. A mounted policeman gets instructions by radio. In 1923, baseball goes to bat via radio. World famous Graham McNamee described the doings of the World Series. It's a hit for the runner and for radio. In 